or Zoom inclusion is another way to put it. It was led by Ben Ogilvy from Star King UU Church of Hayward. Ben spoke about a revolution occurring in our congregations, the silver lining of the pandemic. That is the ability to serve in-person and remote participants simultaneously in worship and other church activities. This is a huge advancement for accessibility, inclusion, and outreach, but only if remote participants feel included and valued. All advances hinge on that. Ben went on to discuss the tremendous advantages of Zoom inclusion and what it takes to make it happen. I'll get to that in a bit. But first, I want to pause and say hello again to remote participants and to name that it feels awkward speaking about you in this reflection, kind of like you're not here. <laughs> well, you are here, and I'm truly grateful. Nicholas, can you put on gallery view so we can all say hi? In a moment. <laughs> it's there. Yeah. It's up? Yeah. Hello, hello. Wait a minute. It's been up for a while. It's yeah. been up for a while. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when thinking about this, I jumped into our UU time machine and thought about all of the volunteer led efforts to start up and keep Zoom going with minimal or outdated technology. We've come a long way. Nicholas's expertise and care has changed the game and capital campaign funding enhanced the technology um, significantly. That's a win. With that said, one of the most important things I learned at this workshop is that it's not just about worship technology. For example, UU Hayward, and that's a nickname, Star King, <laughs> um, actually has a Zoom cart, a mobile Zoom cart that makes it easier to engage congregants with each other, not just in the service, but in meetings and other activities. The heart and soul of Zoom inclusive ministry, as it's called, is about community. It's making sure that all of our Zoomies a term they came up with, UU Hayward, feel included and loved. Ben reinforced more than once, inclusion is only meaningful in action and only if those actions land in a way that feels inclusive to the recipient. I said that three times. The goal of online ministry is the loving inclusion of remote participants in all church activities. It's about community, ministry, accessibility, and loving inclusion. This movement goes back to 2023 when Star King UU Church of Hayward introduced Zoom inclusion with a workshop video at 2023's General Assembly. It was so popular that a follow-up Zoom discussion was held and attended by congregations across the country. That turned out to be the start of a community and a movement, and this group continues today. I signed up to be added to their Google group and look forward to checking it out on behalf of all of us. Here are a few suggestions for getting started with a more inclusive Zoom ministry. Number one, remember the why. Caring for remote participants is ministry. Multi-platform ministry allows more people to come to the table. It is our doorway to meeting the moment. Two, form an inclusive team. There were stories about how teams were formed without Zoomies. <laughs> better word. Uh, this could include remote and in-person participants, technology folks, representatives from ministry and worship associates and connections. Three, 
Get started with incremental steps. This takes time and doesn't happen effortless, effortlessly. A few tips to remember. <laughs> we have this all the time in congregational meetings. Commit to saying every word into a microphone. If someone forgets, wait for the microphone, then start over. Have an online greeter. Remember that the effort drops way down after the basics are in place. However, backsliding can happen. Regular assessments and feedback help a lot. Lastly, see this ministry through the lens of possibility, connection, outreach, and social justice. Think about how expansive the future can be for our churches and our faith. The remote experience will never be exactly the same as in person, but it can still be warmly welcoming, deeply engaging, and spiritually uplifting. And to those on Zoom, I'd love your initial feedback. I'm at Trisha, trishadell.com. My contact information will be in next week's bulletin. Next, Pam Gerke.